Well, good morning, Park Church, and for those of you who are joining us online this morning, and God is good, right? God is with us. Um, God brings us uh, hope. God brings us peace. He brings us joy, and He brings us His love. He came from heaven to earth to give us all of those things. That's why He came, because He loves us. And this morning, I hope that we're reminded of this great love that God has for us and the reason why He came um, to be a part of our lives. He became like us <laughs> so that we could be like Him. Amen? I want to share a few announcements here the life of the church. Um, we look forward to continuing celebrating the, the birth of our Savior um, on Christmas Eve Eve, so December 23rd at 7 p.m. On location right here, we will have a, a celebration uh, candlelight service, as well as um, our Christmas Eve service on December 24th, and um, that will be at 7 o'clock as well. And also, both of those services, for those of you who are online, or uh, maybe you have a family member or whatever who uh, maybe should be a little bit careful, um, we will have both of those services online as well. Also, this is a time of giving, right? I mean, God came and He gave us His great gift of salvation, and God calls us to give as well. So uh, as, you're, uh, as we approach uh, Advent, um, our Advent services, we have our Live Simply initiative, where whatever we take in for uh, tithes and offerings for those two celebrations, we're going to give it back out. And we're going to give everything back out to our local community as well as our mission um, uh, ministries as well. Uh, the local community organizations that we're going to support are Tabitha's Closet, which provides clothing and ministry to so many people in our community as well as uh, Grace, Inc., which is a place where, uh, that provides uh, care for children with disabilities, as well as we're going to um, also support our Guala Guatemala Missions uh, Ministry as well. Amen? So be in prayer of what God would have you give and, and to, uh, uh, to give to those around us who um, have needs and um, that we can reach the gospel with for Jesus Christ. And as we prepare for our worship uh, service this morning, um, those who may not be aware, our very close friend and brother, um, Dan Pence, passed away several days ago, as many of you know. And uh, Tamara and your family, we we're, we're continue to pray for you. Um, we're so glad that you're here with us this morning. And you know what? Dan brought so much joy to our lives. And we kind of rearranged things uh, this morning because we want to dedicate this, this service here this morning to our friend and our brother, um, Dan. He was a big part of our praise team. Uh, Dan also served as a lead team member. And he also cleaned our church every week. And it, he was a, a great father, a, a great brother, a great husband, and touched so many lives. And we're going to celebrate the joy that uh, Dan brought to us this morning. Amen? So let's celebrate this morning. Amen. Yes, let's stand together and worship an awesome king who is still on the throne.
Joseph land your aid while our hearts in love we raise glory to God glory to God glory in the highest glory to God right now. God is still on the throne. God is still good. Amen. Amen. No matter what, God is good. You are good. In the morning I'll sing you are good. In the evening I'll sing you are, are good. You are good to me.
we talk about joy this week, it feels funny to, talk, to think about a baby in a manger. It doesn't, that doesn't quite feel like 2020 to me, a baby in a manger. 2020 has been the year of so many things. I know there's so many things going on in all of our lives right now, so many hardships, so many things. God really showed me um, what joy can be like in 2020 for each person here. Because joy isn't the absence of sadness. Joy is a focus. Joy is being in the presence of a mighty king who still is on the throne, even in 2020. That Jesus went to a cross joy was set before him not because it was joyful to be on the cross but because of what came from the cross and, and we all have opportunities right now in all these struggles to find God in every moment to be present in his presence there is joy that he is always present I think the biggest thing is are we present right now not worrying about the next minute, the next hour, the next day, the next year. Or living in shame or regret or of the past. What is God doing in this moment? Whatever burdens are on you or whatever struggles are, we're faced with, finding God in these moments is what gets me through these difficult times right now. There's been so many. And especially now, to draw close to him right now that we can find joy in his presence. Joy to the world.
At this time, I'm going to ask the Davis family, they're going to come forward and, and light the candle of joy. So as we continue in worship, and as we just saw the candle being lit, this candle of joy, I just want to share with you the passage where uh, we, God shouted out um, to the shepherds. He kind of pulled out his heavenly microphone, right? And he shouted out this good news to the humble shepherds. And this is the passage, Luke 2, verses 18 through 10, reminds us that in the night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Do not be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Great joy. I mean, we could all use a daily dose of that each day, right? And, and, and Dan and so many here has brought so much joy to one another, whether through uh, our humor, our encouragement, or just our serving one another and just being there for one another as well. And as we go through this Advent series and we see this story of our Savior's birth unfold, we are reminded again and again not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. Because God is with us. Whatever is going on in our world and in our country and all the world around us, in our personal world, as we put our trust in Him, and we know that he's come to give us his peace and his joy and this hope. We do not have to be afraid because he has come and he is with us. And that's why God chose the shepherds. I mean, have you ever thought about that? Why did God choose the shepherds? <laughs> I mean, God could have went to the elite. He could have went to the powerful. He could have went to the religious leaders. But instead, Jesus made this uh, the most uh, important uh, news story, the most incredible news story in the whole universe. He chose ordinary, everyday people, just like you and just like me. People who were filled with humility. People who depended upon God. Who didn't depend upon money or greed or a, a, a fancy temple to worship God, but their altar was uh, the field and the skies before them. And they humbled themselves. And when you humble yourselves before God, you're always looking up. <laughs> when we're filled with pride, we're always looking down. On everything and everybody. But when we're filled with humility, we're always looking up. First Peter 5, 6 through 7 reminds us this morning to humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So, yeah, this morning, God is with us. God's with us during the good times, and He's with us during the difficult times. He's with us every moment, <laughs> every minute, every second of the day. God is loving on us, and He's watching out for us, and He's caring for us. And He desires to bring this joy into our lives that He brought on that Christmas day. So as this love story evolves, <laughs> as we read in the Scriptures, as we learn more about it here through Advent season, what we see is something incredible happening. We're, we're seeing something colossal happening. It's the coming of Christ. He's coming from heaven to earth. It's bigger than when Noah and the flood, or whatever your favorite Bible story is, bigger than Abraham's covenant with God or Moses leading the Israelites into the promised land. But God has come <laughs> from heaven to earth to be with us. And now we have joy because he's here. We're going to continue with some praise and worship. I just want to give you uh, a, a, from Rick Warren a quote that he describes joy to be. And this is what it says. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details in my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. And a determined choice to praise God in every situation. So this morning, let's embrace 
this joy. Let's embrace the good news. Let's humble ourselves before God and look up and give Him praise and give Him glory. Let's continue with worship. so great last night getting to come together with my church family um, and just worship, you know. Um, we just worshiped. You know, you don't always know the things to say sometimes, but just being together, being in the presence of the Holy Spirit and letting God, let the Spirit do all the talking right now to your heart. 
as we just are in his presence, worshiping together, united. And in 2020, God's going to get all the glory. God's getting all the glory. But there's so much favor on all, our, all of our lives. There's so much blessing. God, I pray that everyone here would see your blessing, see your favor, see your purpose in everything that's, that's around us. That's where joy comes from. God, you're in every detail. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sing another song take me back to where I started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry when I come with my agenda I'm sorry I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this hole. just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do, I just want you, nothing else, oh nothing else, nothing else will do, I just want you, nothing else. Remember, the God we serve, so many things in our world that want to tell us to put something else on the throne. So many things that want to take our attention. So many things that want to capture our anxiety and our fear and our
that disbelief. Question if you're if you're even there, God. I pray that everyone here, not for a minute, would take a that we keep our eyes focused on you, God, in this time of um, this season. To remember that you sent your only son. so that we could be free. We could be free from all the darkness that this world brings, all the hurt, the, all the disappointments. And we can find joy even in the midst of 2020. Because God, you are still good. You're still good. that the enemy has, has brought in our way, that God is still good. He is still on the throne. Amen? Amen. Let's sing that again. Here we go. Because you are God is good, amen? We get to celebrate our lives together each day. We get to support one another, be a community, so that we can care for one another and care for those around us. And Dan did just that. In our lives, in the praise team's life, we are so blessed. And I would have conversations with Dan, and I, I'm newer here than a lot of you are. And many of you have known Dan much longer than I have, but we really connected. And he'd come in to clean the church, and uh, we would talk 
faith family. And one thing about Dan, he was very real, <laughs> right? And he would also, he acknowledges his shortcomings. But he also knew that he had a, a Savior in his life, Christ. And he loved Jesus, and he loved people. So I want to close out this morning with just a message from Dan, from, from Dan to us. Listen to this with me. Hey, uh, April asked me if I would uh, talk about what it is that brings me to hope. Um, I can tell you this, we've... Uh, Myself and my family, we've had uh, we've had uh, a tough go at times, and uh, we've been through some things. And I didn't, you know, I didn't really know how to deal with it, uh, and I went all about it in the wrong way. Uh, uh, leaned on other people, or tried to lean on other people, and that's uh, you know that's not the answer. Um, the thing that I can tell you that really helped me is uh, has has been the worship band and the members of the worship band and this church, especially in the last, probably the last couple of months, things have really begun to come around. I, my way of thinking has changed a lot. You know, I realize now uh, that uh, life without Christ is hopeless and that with Christ, there is always hope. So, um, I know that you know there's days there there there's going to be times when things are really hard and things are really rough and and you, those days are going to come and go but there's still hope. There's always hope. And it's only through Christ. And uh things have finally begun to sunk in a little bit and I'm uh, I'm I'm beginning to understand now. Um so uh I'm still a mess. But I'm getting better. I'm getting better. There's still hope for all of us. We were reminded of that this, this morning. Dan reminded of us of that as well. That regardless of everything that comes against us, regardless of our mistakes, or regardless of how this world comes against us and the circumstances in our life, we always have hope in Christ. And that's exactly why he came. So Tamara and family, we are here for you. We want, we want to support you in any way that we can. And I want you to know that, that we love you and that we're praying for you each day. In church, we're, we're here to support one another as well. If, if you're just struggling with this, me and Noel are available to talk anytime. And uh, I know others here at the church would be glad to talk with you as well. Our care team, Kevin and Christy and Judy and, and others here as well from our lead team. And um, just to support you. And uh, that's what community does. We come around one another. Dan knew that. Um, Dan was, he'd come in, he'd encourage us. He, he was there for us. He was kind, looking for ways to serve others and and we're just going to continue to carry on what Dan taught us. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to send you out here with the prayer. Before I do, just a reminder to be back next week. Um, for those of you who are new this morning, I'd um, love to get to know you better. Uh, just feel free to contact me or catch me out in the lobby. And um, we're glad to have you here as well. And next week, we're going to talk about this incredible love <laughs> that Christ has brought to us. Amen. Let me pray for us this morning. Father, we just uh, thank you for your grace. Uh, we thank you for walking with us um, through 2020. Um, and we know that you're already in 2021. It's not a matter of you guessing. It's just a matter of us trusting. Because uh, you're already there. You have a plan. You have a plan for our personal lives. You have a plan for our church. And help us to live into that. Help us just to have this honest faith like our brother did. Uh, that I'm not perfect, but you are. And you're the only hope that we have. So, Father, bring healing. We pray for the uh, Pence family and uh, just that you are with them, with everyone, each one of them uh, through the coming weeks. And I just pray for those who are right now just going through difficulty, whether they're in the hospital or they're sick or whatever it may be, that you bring healing to them. And, Father, we just thank you that you are present with us today. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and we will see you next week.